Hello, Probus. Howdy, howdy. Welcome to But It Was Aliens, the extraterrestrial comedy podcast that's not covering the extraterrestrial today. I'm your host today, the Walker of Moons, the Drifter Through the Stars, Granny Moonwalker. And opposite me, as always, is the grey one. Grey balls, grey chin, and the tallest guy in the room, Kevin <laughs> Le Grey. Le Grey. I am French today. Before we start this episode, would you like to tell people <laughs> what you did with the research notes for this episode? <laughs> I passworded them and left a hint which should have popped up when... Greybeard tried to open the document, but it didn't. And it was a little bit anticlimactic in the end. But the password I gave him was queef. (laughs) Such a (laughs) grown-up. And now I feel I have started something because it's going to happen the next document I get. (laughs) (laughs) Well, probably not for the next 15, because they're already written. Now, over the years... I can actually say that we've been doing this for years now, and that's crazy. It's mad that you listen to us at all, so (laughs) thank you. Our family certainly don't. (laughs) We love you. All right. Over the years, Greybeard has expressed his desire to visit haunted places, and I've always said I'm out. You have indeed, pussy. Another thing I've always said I wouldn't do... Is something that we're going to talk about today. Ouija boards. Oh, we know. Ouija boards. We're heading up my street. Straight up Main Street. A Ouija board is a flat board marked with the letters of the alphabet and numbered 0 to 9, along with the words yes and no. An object is then placed on the board, sometimes a glass, cup, or something the participants can put their hands on, which would be used to communicate with. And just in case you didn't know what a Ouija board is, Greybeard, there's a picture there for you. I am very familiar with what a Ouija board is. Mr Moonwalker has given me the traditional image of a Ouija board with the alphabet, the numbers, yes, no. I can't see a goodbye square on this board. I don't know if you're going to get into that in this episode, whether this is about a specific case of using a Ouija board or Ouija board, depending on where you're from. But it's very important that you close the loop, which I did not do the time I did a Ouija board. Now, it is a popular belief that the word Ouija is from the German and French words for yes. But this is a misconception. (laughs) Yes, board. It is actually taken from a word which was spelt out on the board when the inventor asked a ghost or spirit he was communicating with to name it. We are going to be taking a look at some accounts of those that have dealt with Ouija boards today. So when you are we looking at accounts or are we going to include the origin that you've just mentioned there? We're going to look into accounts. Okay, glorious. The first story today is an account from someone named Paige. Diamond Dallas. Paige. Paige recalls... Hangman. Adam. Paige. That when she was about six... Ethan. Paige. Seven. She did a Ouija board with her mother and older sister. Her older sister was in her teens at the time. They'd just recently moved to a new house, and this house was much older than their previous one. Not only was it older, but it was much larger too. There was a chill in the air that night, so they put the fire on. Not all of their furniture had arrived yet, so they decided to order pizza. Hey! Sat on the floor, eating pizza. Paige's older sister convinced their mother to let them play with their old Ouija board. The mother agreed, so after dinner they got it out. Whilst they were using the board, a box within the room containing books flew across it and then the fire went out shaken to her very core their mother took the girls to stay at their grandma's house I like it I like it 
So was the Ouija board, the family's Ouija board as in the children had it lying around because you said it was their old Ouija board? Yeah. So Or was it the mums? Because th- if, so, if it was the mums, that's an irresponsible parent right there. I think it was the mums. Don't leave entries to the dark side in the presence of your children. Or it was the eldest daughter's from a younger age i'm sorry something's just caught my eye you've added a new sticker to your macbook at some point yes i have mickey mouse (laughs) (laughs) with a slogan above him saying we're all fucked (laughs) why mickey mouse well hey let me tell you a little thing about life (laughs) (laughs) oh no not that again uh this this accounts mate feels very similar to when I believe I was about nine years old and we did a Ouija board. So to continue the story. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I say continue the story. We have another story to get to. A story from Reddit user No Springs. It's like I'm not even here. They were about 12 or 13 and were spending the night at a friend's. They were goofing around with the Ouija board their friend and his sister they explained that they were getting all sorts of gibberish come through but they weren't taking it serious they were just scaring themselves for fun until two messages came through oh actual messages yes i can see you through the window shit and also I can see you through his eyes. <laughs> what? Whoa. The first one was interesting, but the second one, my gosh. I have no idea why I put it in the voice, considering they would have spelt that out. It, it, either, necessary. Either way. Necessary. <laughs> I have no problem with that whatsoever. When you said I can see you through the window, I was thinking, how are you communicating with... Are you outside the house using the board? Why not go in? Why are you looking outside through the window? And then you can see through his eyes. At that point, I thought, shit. (laughs) Run, folks. Run. Run, children. What? (laughs) Well, hey, children. I think you're about to hit my model. Oh, you brought the shotgun? What? The room they were in was in the basement. And there was indeed a small window. They asked more questions, and then they were told exactly where the spirit was. I'm under the car. Never use the car again. The three of them plucked up the courage to grab a torch and go and investigate. They got up, walked outside, and took a look under the car. There, they were greeted by a huge black cat hissing at them. They legged it inside, and as they did, the power went out completely, and they shit themselves. A few minutes later, the power came back on, and they sat there wide awake until the morning, and vowed to never play that again. Oh, I can feel that you had fun researching this. (laughs) Do we know what happened to No Springs? No. Do we know where the springs went? No. So no springs could have... Again, they didn't They didn't close the circle. They didn't say goodbye. No. Therefore, the conversation is still open. You've invited the spirits through. Very important in Ouija boardism. Now, first time I heard, I can see you through the window. Yeah. Or read it. And then it was, I can see you through his eyes. Mm-hmm. They could essentially be one and the same. Because the eyes are essentially the window to the soul. Okay. So they can see through I, the cat's eyes. I was going to say the cat. Is he looking through yeah. the cat? And the cat is male. Unless it was literally just looking through the cat's eyes and could see them through the window at the basement. What if we've got a fallen type scenario here where the spirit Time is... is on my side. Yes, it is. I forgot to add in the customary pause whilst we add that every time we mention that film. Phenomenal film. Ah, oh, I've lost my trial of... Oh, yes. Now, so you always say... You want to be free. But you keep 
run them back. Are we going to do it all night? No. <laughs> <laughs> so do to me. Crikey. Sorry. Do we have a scenario whereby the spirit is moving between different entities? So the spirit was originally outside, was attracted to the beacon going off in the dark world from them using the Ouija board, was looking through the window, then transferred inside and was looking at one of the kids through the other kid's eyes, not travelling through touch so much as just travelling through, you know, uh, I don't want to spoil the movie, but spirit is travelling through the air, essentially. Oh, no, but only happens through touch. At the end of the movie. But that's because he's... But I'm saying, what if yeah, that element uh, of the power yeah. is how demons travel? They can travel through the air between people, don't have to go through touch, can just flip from one to the other. Kind of like, um, is it Supernatural, the TV series? Not seen it. Oh, it's, it's kind of a modern day Buffy, really good vibe to it. Anyway, demons like fly out of humans' mouths, like oh, big black smoky goo comes out. So I'm wondering if something like that... He flopped out of the cat's mouth and then flew into one of the kids' mouths and the other kids didn't realise. And now those kids are all buggered. This demon's going to school the next day. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing a lesson on, like, ancient Geometry. history. <laughs> yeah, that's wrong, miss. I was there. Yeah, they li- yeah, literally history. And they're like, facts are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that never happened. How do you know? Because I stabbed him through the eye. <laughs> it wasn't in... His forehead, <laughs> like it was reported. Uh, the teacher's like, you do realise... Look, talking... I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> you do realise we're talking about Jesus. And the kid's like, yeah! It's me! And they're like, he was always a show-off. <laughs> <laughs> Kids immediately expelled. <laughs> now, we have another story here from Reddit user Turtle Shell Magic. What's magic about a turtle shell? They, along with their two best friends, who we will call Jeff. My name is Jeff. We're calling them both Jeff. And Ricardo. I wasn't really paying attention to your research notes. I saw Jeff and then R.I. and I just assumed Jeffrey. (laughs) I was wrong. And Jeff. We. My name is Jeff. They played a Ouija board at Jeff's house. They explained that all was going fine until Jeff asked how the spirit died. And murder was the case that they gave them. Murder. She wrote. When asked how it died, it replied, Not I. <laughs> it gave its name, which is something Turtle Shell couldn't remember, and it gave them a date in the 1800s. Azazel. They say that the whole room felt different. Then the communicator piece they were using was ripped from their hands and thrown across the room. They immediately stopped playing after that. Ah, you've got to see it through once you started. A week later, Yep's mum passed away from cancer oh, very no. suddenly. Nobody knew that she had cancer. And not long after Ricardo's mum was hospitalised for a serious drinking problem. And Turtle Shells had an emergency hysterectomy that same week. Crikey. Turtle Shell also explains that they've also experienced things that they don't think they would have if they hadn't have done the Ouija board. Such as hearing voices seeing dark shadows, and the sounds of footsteps. It would be really helpful if we knew Turtle Shell Magic's age and the group's age to try and put some context to all these health conditions because with absolute respect, because it's a horrific condition, if you've got cancer, you may not realise, and this happens to lots of people. Mm -hmm. I've seen it with people I know where suddenly they go to hospital one day for a random checkup and find out they've got something awful they had no idea about. So that's not necessarily unusual in and of itself. Someone went to hospital for a drinking problem. I'm guessing that drinking problem had probably been around for quite a while to then become serious and require hospitalization. Mm -hmm. The hysterectomy, 
if this kid is like eight years old, then that changes things for me. But if this person is like in their 40s, 50s, 60s, that's not necessarily unusual again. So it's just, it's hard to grasp how much could be the spirits and how much is just life taking its just natural a course. Just coincidence. Yeah, sometimes the age is really important. Voices. Um, I want to know more about the voices too. Hearing voices, what were they doing? Were they like, all right, mate? Or was it more... Kick him in the face. Kick him in the face. All right there, our kid. As he goes to hold his sister's baby. You also have to look at they didn't close the loop. Yep. Yep. So that demon has got a open door to walk around in our world. Do as they please. Things are going to get worse. If they're called through. Mm hmm. And the loop isn't closed. Yep. Are they then tethered to the people that called them through? Or can they just go anywhere they wish? That's a good question. I was going to say, I assume, go anywhere they wish because they've walked through the doorway and till that doorway is closed, they're sucked back off. But they could have just walked through a doorway into a essentially a room. They could be stuck in the f in the walls of the house if they're... But then what if you do a Ouija board outside? They've got the whole of the earth to roam around. That is true. Or, but then if they're tethered to that person, the person's, they can only the go souls of those who called them in. Where they are. What The vicinity I think of them. to be tethered to the people <clears throat> is probably scarier to me Absolutely. than to be tethered to a building. Because then what happens if the building, you open the door, can they go outside? It's this doesn't feel like the entity is going to be stuck to the building per se i think they're more likely to be stuck to the building if they are like a door can open they can't walk through the door i mean you've said before that the world is essentially energy how mm -hmm. can energy can go everywhere it can but it can also stop it from going somewhere but the world is all around us yeah how you, you could stop have, on the world you could have more energy in one place than another until it Therefore, moves. Exactly. But at that moment, there's not enough energy within themselves to get through the door. I'm getting confused by this concept. The same way that if you had enough energy, essentially, or muscle, you could probably run through a steel door. I highly if doubt anyone's don't have got enough. enough. If you don't have enough, Theoretically, it's yeah, yeah. That's exactly where I'm going with it. Like... The juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> He's got enough energy. Finny Jones, bitch. <laughs> he could run through steel doors. Hmm. No, I'm going. I'm going towards. They have free access to the world. I'm just thinking through in my mind how you could contain any form of whatever demons are, paranormal energy, souls from other planes. I don't know. But how can you? If a window is open, if a door is open. There's no reason they couldn't exit in my mind. I think they're tethered to the soul of the individuals that pulled them through. Yeah. They could literally they go pulled to you through any... And only they can put you back by closing the loop. That's what we're settling on. <laughs> and then I suppose if that person has a kid, part of their energy is transferred. Therefore, that's why in quite a lot of films... We end up with a cursed child. You see... Uh, Demons and ghosts that will haunt families. Yeah, okay. I will come back for your firstborn. We got way deep on something yeah, that makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Talking about it like it's deep level science. It is. Now we have Randy's tale. Randy. And Randy was a victim of being the little brother. Uh -oh. And when he was younger... His older brother and older cousin convinced him to do a Ouija board with them. They turned out the lights and lit a candle. Randy took his seat and with his favourite doll by his side, KILL IT! <laughs> Nervously, they started asking questions. Before they knew it, those questions were being answered. Then it started dragging itself across the board, spelling something familiar. K. E. L. L. Y. This was accompanied by a loud bang against the radiator. Oh shit. 
they all shit themselves uh -huh. and let out a scream. They turn the lights on, and by the radiator was the severed head of his <laughs> doll, Kelly. What? They took the doll's head. They took the doll's head. Kelly. Kelly. To save my baby. But they didn't. Well, why would you possess a doll and then take its head? What if the doll was possessed? Then why and is the how head it off? got out. Ah. Uh... So now Kelly roams free, free, tethered to Randy and Randy's brother and cousin. The tethering. We've made several movies now at this point. <laughs> Definite movie within there. Here's a story that takes place at what I'm assuming is an American high school gym. A soccer team, <coughs> football team, had a sleepover at the gym and decided to do a Ouija board. Nothing major was happening, but then the board spelled the words thirst, fire, and help. They closed the board and went back to school a few days later. They went to the director of athletics and asked if he knew the history of the gym. He told them that the gym burned down once a long time ago and one man died in the fire. So... If this man is being called back... Oh, my mind is going on 16 different tangents here. Was he being called back to the time he was on fire? Possibly. That was going to be my second point. I've got a third. My first was going to be what came first, the thirst or the fire? Was he thirsty looking for a drink, then the fire struck? Or is he thirsty because he's on fire? And that seems a little bit effed up to me. What if he's forever roaming with a dry throat? Because he's been... Because he's crispy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing better at this point. Toasty! Now, my next thought, my wondering thought was, is it the man that's being called back or has a demon attached himself to this man's trauma slash story and is coming through? At uh, what point is it a spirit that's coming through the Ouija board? At what point is it a demon? What really is a demon? I mean, I know biblically we're talking about angels, but... I was about to say, um, is a demon you... necessarily an evil spirit? No, not um, if you go all the way back to their origins. Not necessarily, no. But in popular culture, yes. I guess So what... are you thinking more of a popular culture version of a demon coming through? I guess I was. Well, I, I don't really know. That's what I'm trying to work out. What what comes through a Ouija board? Is it the spirit of those who have passed on? Or have... That with something attached to it. Has something dark attached to them? Or is it the dark thing that comes through all along using the stories of those who use the board to get through? Ooh. Sneaky, dark spirits. Hmm. Which makes me wonder about the time i did a ouija board a story from tumblr and whoa, whoa, netflix hold on, hold on, on I'm, buzzfeed i'm wondering if i've got a demon attached to me hey that would be me <laughs> a few months ago my friend came over bringing a ouija board with her having a sleepover so there was five of them there that night after they started to use the board they met a spirit called joe hi joe it's a very Calm spirit name. They'd been communicating with Joe for around an hour when one of the girls asked Joe if he was a bad spirit. Joe answered no, but then spelled him. Uh -huh. When asked what he was talking about, he spelt he's coming. Oh shit. Then, Joe's got a friend. Then spelt the name Zozo. That sounds Ghostbusters-esque. The following morning, the girls tried again. But they weren't met by Joe this time. They were met by a spirit claiming to be Joe's wife. I'm sure it was. <laughs> this is Zozo. They asked her if Joe was a bad spirit. She answered, yes. What? So is Joe Zozo? Is Zozo Zozo? Is Zozo Joe, Joe lying? 
is the spirit that's Joe's wife lying? Did, why would she say Joe is a bad spirit? Is she telling the truth or was Joe telling the truth and this spirit is not good? Which one of them is Zozo? I don't know, though. <laughs> this is the problem with short accounts. So many questions. So, so many questions. So many. We have another story from a Reddit user. And this time it's from Reddit user Lopsided Koala. It's the 80s. So imagine bright colours, unnecessary accessories, double denim, <laughs> mullets, shoulder pads. Hey. Now, Lopsided Koala was fucking around with a Ouija board. Common theme here. And Lopsided Koala's dad was raised by his aunt and never knew who his mother was or his father. So the first question Lopsided Koala asked was, is my grandmother alive? The spirit confirmed that yes, she was alive. After more questioning, it was revealed that she also lived in Lopsided Koala's home state. Then Lopsided Koala questioned what street it was, and that was revealed to them. With this information in tow, Lopsided Koala looked up that street and it existed in their town. But Lopsided Koala's grandmother didn't live there. However, a few years later, Lopsided Koala's father found their mother. The name of the street they were given by the spirit was incorrect. It was actually the name of the town in their home state. So this was a positive story of a Ouija board. What was it though? We don't really know enough about the outcome of the story to know that it was positive. We also don't know for definite without further analysis, DNA testing, that this was lopsided koala's mum, whether this was Mrs. Koala. That would be her grandmother. Grandmother, sorry. This could be a stranger looking to financially benefit from the situation for all we know. We need more info, damn it, these Reddit posters. Was this one Reddit? Mm Mm-hmm. Lopsided koala. How did the koala get lopsided? Who knows, right? I don't have too many thoughts about that one. I'm... Yeah, there's just not enough info there to ask too many questions. We don't know the answers. Interesting, this is the first positive story I think we've heard, possibly that I've ever heard about a Ouija board. It rarely ends positively. Usually leads to dark things happening, bumps in the nights and exorcisms. (laughs) Which brings me back to Zozo. Is Zozo the name of a demon? The name rings a bell. I think we should do a quick Google. Zozo, otherwise known as the Ouija board demon is the demon allegedly summoned through the use of Ouija boards and other forms of spiritual communication. What? What? (laughs) Did you know this? No. There is a demon that specifically comes through Ouija boards, and it's called Zozo. The fallen angel banished from heaven eons ago by God, rumoured to be the demon who possessed Roland Doe. Was that... Roland from the Ouija board case we just covered. No. The possessions were written about in a book called The Exorcist under the name Pazuzu, which in turn inspired the modern version of Pazuzu, which comes from Babylonian culture. Mimics the voices of the dead, who the users of the Ouija board wish to talk to. You've just uncovered something, son. Do you hear voices when I, using not personally. a Ouija board? I thought they just. Well, spelled... I, I took that to be figuratively rather than literally, so it's pretending to be people as they're communicating through the. Uh, so you know we've got to do a case on. Well, you've just touched inadvertently so on the that... case that inspired the film The Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> Ouija Part Two coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Ouija Part Two: The Exorcist, The Tethered. <laughs> now here are some instances in where a Ouija board was used by others instead of by teenagers messing about. In the murder trial of Joshua Tucker, oh, shit. his mother insisted that he was possessed by the devil who found him whilst using a Ouija board. I believe I've heard of that one, yeah. Hello, Zozo. And, yeah, yeah. 
1994 in London. Yeah. Convicted murderer Stephen Young was granted a retrial when it was revealed that four of the jurors had conducted a seance using a Ouija board to contact the murder victim who named Young as his killer. After the retrial, Young was convicted for a second time and jailed for life. Young weren't getting away. I believe I came across that one in my first degree. Alice Cooper. <laughs> I just looked at the research notes and I was thinking, why is there a picture of Alice Cooper here? We've not mentioned Alice Cooper. Yes, that Alice Cooper was previously known by the name Vincent Fernier and probably still is to those close to him. Early press releases claim that it was after a session with a Ouija board and that it was revealed to Vince that he was the reincarnation of a 17th century witch by the name of Alice Cooper. And that's how the name for the band was formed. Damn, did not know that. So Alice Cooper, the band or the singer? Both? So I always thought he was named Alice Cooper. So the band is Alice Cooper. But the band but is Alice the, Cooper. There's lots of cases of that, isn't there? Mm. And the lead singer becomes the, the focal point of the band. I, I guess I'm just trying to understand if Alice Cooper is a witch or if Alice Cooper are witches. <laughs> Cooper, witch, not plural. Kitch. Now, this is the part of the probe where we turn to science and scepticism. And after having weeks and weeks of no science or scepticism in a lot of my cases, I come with a quite a bit. Of which one? <laughs> Both. According to science, the Ouija board is considered the result of the ideometer response. This is a phenomenon of making movements unconsciously similar to automatic writing. Studies have been conducted under laboratory conditions and the subjects were shown to be moving the object on the board known as a planchette involuntarily. Darren Brown has done a lot on that. Thoroughly interesting. They found that when using yes and no questions, the Ouija board was significantly more accurate than guesswork which completely makes sense when you have a 50-50 chance of answering correctly. Skeptics have called the users operators and have stated that when names or more descriptive messages appear, it's generally something that has been on the operator's mind. A quote from the book Pseudoscience and the Paranormal by Terence Hines. The planchette is guided by unconscious muscular exertions like those responsible for table movement. Nonetheless, in both cases, the illusion that the object, table or planchette, is moving under its own control is often extremely powerful and sufficient to convince many people that spirits are truly at work. The unconscious muscle movements responsible for the moving tables and Ouija board phenomena seen at seances are examples of a class of phenomena known to what psychologists call a dissociative state. A dissociative state is one in which consciousness is somehow divided or cut off from some aspects of the individual's normal cognitive, motor or sensory functions. The brain is a weird thing. It's awesome. No surprise to anyone, the church didn't take kindly with the catholic church in some parts explicitly forbidding any practice of divination which includes the use of ouija boards some calling for the boards to be banned and warned congregations that when using ouija boards they were communicating with demons in 2001 alan mcgordo in new mexico Fundamentalist groups viewed them as a symbol of witchcraft and burned all Ouija boards they could find. Boo. The story of Alice Cooper is also bullshit. No! He came out and said that while thinking of a name for the band, he literally named it the first thing that came to mind. Why did Alice Cooper came, come to mind? I have no idea. Maybe a spirit put it in his mind. <laughs> You're not getting away with it that easily, Vincent. <laughs> 
So to summarize, we have several cases of spirits visiting those using Ouija boards. From the mundane, the creepy, and downright scary. And one case of the friendlies. We heard how the Ouija board had been used in the court of law and how Alice Cooper used it and didn't use it because that story was bullshit. We heard what the scientific community thinks and also the skeptics. So, Greybeard the Tall, I ask, is this Ouija's? Or are you calling bullshit? We've got to go deep on a specific Ouija case at some point. Part two, the tethering. Because these are fascinating to me. The Ouija board was originally created as literally a board game for children, wasn't it? And Hasbro brought the worries. That's kind of twisted when you think about it. But let's put that to one side. Anything to make money. I... Back in the day. I can't remember what Darren Brown's one special was where he focused on Ouija boards but it's my favorite one that he's ever done it was a sort of paranormally themed one where he done seances and that kind of thing absolutely brilliant (laughs) absolutely brilliant are they like b-tech beyonce (laughs) (laughs) it's how you really say it son (laughs) listen to the converted but yeah, he kind of went to town on explaining that at the end of that one where it is people subconsciously doing it and it all comes from the mind. But who put it in the mind is what I ask. We're subjected to so much over the course of our lifetime. And the way I always think of the brain is a massive like storeroom of filing cabinets. Each one holds everything that you've seen, heard, like smell, anything like that. And at any point, like, so when you think of something, that filing cabinet opens. So when you're asleep, some of those doors or cabinets are just opening and things are just coming through. Mm -hmm. So it could just be it was subconsciously put there. So At someone some subconsciously has Zozo in their mind. They may have read it, heard it without even knowing. The same way I can mention Captain Morgan's right now. And you will probably open your phone later and see a Captain Morgan's advert. <sighs> I really want to say that it's Ouija's. <laughs> I find them fascinating. So, so, so very interesting. But I also don't believe in them. Although I have also experienced things myself when I did one. But we don't need to go into that. I feel like it would be really relevant. So is it (laughs) Ouija's or is it bullshit? Uh, I don't want to say it's bullshit. But I don't want to say it's Ouija's. Uh... (laughs) What do you mean when you say, is it Ouija? Is it Ouija's? Well, it is Ouija. It's what they are. I don't necessarily believe that... The spirits are coming through. The sentence I will state to clarify my position is that I do believe that those doing the Ouija are moving the positions of the piece. Okay. And it's not being moved by some external force. It's not being moved by an external force. No. An external presence. So I don't know whether that makes it Ouija or not Ouija. I, I think it would claim or make it not. But then what if a demon is possessing the hand and moving it? (laughs) Then they're still not moving it. So it's not Ouija then? No. What say you? Well, I'm not saying it's Ouija. (laughs) I have always stated that I would never do one. Uh Uh-huh. However, after researching this and hearing these stories, I'm going with it's all bullshit. Oh, so you do one? No. (laughs) (laughs) So I had an idea for your birthday episode last year that I did the same year I did the curse episode. Mm. I was going to put a Ouija board on the underside of your chair and get you to flip it over towards the end. And you'd find out you were sitting on it all along or like the, the paranormal star, which is actually a protective symbol from witchcraft. But regardless, some sort of paranormal symbol. A pentagram yeah. under my chair. Yeah. <laughs> if 
I would have sat on a Ouija board, I don't think it would have counted. What about if, what if I, I s- wiggled my bum? Yeah, <laughs> what about if I stuck the bit to it? <laughs> All of a sudden I'm in the chair and I just start moving across everywhere. <laughs> I'd I'd have the um, the plant or whatever it's called on the hello bit so the gateway is open. <laughs> and it's glued so you can never close it. What if I died? Well, what if? You better do a Ouija board so I can fucking come and haunt you. Ah, I want your company, <laughs> son. You come join me. It's fine. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm not saying it's Ouija's. I'm saying it's bullshit. I think a lot of these stories are just made up and just chucked on Reddit. A lot of them are just... There's not enough detail there. And if it, I feel if it happened to you, you'd have a bit more detail. You'd remember things a little bit more. Hmm. There is another argument to be made there. What if the people posted their initial story and then were killed by the spirits and never got back to add the detail? Then, <laughs> my apologies. So yeah, this is bullshit. So, it's bad income. That is it from us today. You can find us on our socials, on Facebook, uh, but it was aliens. We have our Facebook group, Extraterrestrial Towers. Where you can find mummy memes and mummy memes. Pretty much solely mummy memes. Occasionally we will post in there when we're not busy. Which is very rare. (laughs) One day we plan to do more in there. We really do. We're just busy. Uh, You can also find us on Instagram at But It Was Aliens Podcast. We are on Twitter at But It Was Aliens. And you can also find us on Patreon forward slash but it was aliens where there you will not find mummy memes you will find Rasputin's dick (laughs) and ghosts and ghouls and pirate ships and doggies and vampires congamatos cryptids bonus episodes kushtakas (laughs) kushtaka so that is it from us remember the truth is up there and Kevin is tall hash tag like six foot seven and my name is Kevin I'm a whole lot of fun <laughs>